Hey, 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 welcome back to Refiner of Reviews. I am the one, the only, the ginger ninja, Cameron Smith. I'm Austin Smith, baby. And um, today we are doing a Refiner request coming from a Miss Jess. Ica. A Miss Jess. And um, she wanted us to do the movie review, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, Parasite. So, one of the Academy Award last year, I believe, for Best Film and Best Director. I'm not sure if it won Best Screenplay. We'll have to look it up. Austin, look that up for when we get in, run into some fun facts. Um, but, while he's doing that, um, this podcast is brought to you by Refiner Reviews. Or not Refiner Reviews, sorry, Refiner Productions. We are a video and photo production company. Um, as always, you can see that displayed on my titties. And... Um, yeah, you know, we do everything from weddings, uh, commercials for businesses, podcasts you see here. We produce a couple of those. Um, but yeah, hit us up. Check us out at our website, refinerproductions.com. Now that we got all that out of the way, um, yeah, man, this movie um, is a foreign film from a director in South Korea. Um, and it made a lot of money, and it was a big deal in South Korea, and then it came over here, and the Academy found it. Worthy to give it the uh, best picture. Now, we've talked about the Academy a few times on here, um, the Academy Awards. I'm going to be completely honest. A lot of the time, well, just because something gets in an Academy Award doesn't mean it's a great film. And there's a lot of politics and reasons behind they pick the reason they pick the movies that they pick to win the Academy Award. Um, I mean, obviously there are times where an Academy Award is grant, is warranted, and I think that the film that... Gets it, deserves it, right? Um, but their metric on what is a good movie and what is not is not necessarily the you know end all. And um, so yeah, sometimes I pick fucking shitty movies. I feel like to be a uh, to be Academy Award winners. I'm not saying this movie is one of those movies. Jess, this movie sucks. That's not what we're saying. I'm just joking. But uh, we'll break it down. And exp- we'll break it down because it's a well made film. I just don't like reading subtitles. Because then I can't watch what's well, going on on screen. That, you need to check your privilege over there because it pisses me. You off. need to read; it's good for you. But um, anyway, let's let's jump into some fun facts. So Austin, here's those fun facts, baby boy. But as everyone already knows, I can't read. I can do it. You want to handle this? One's read? gonna be rough, dude. Well, disclosure here: if we mispronounce any of these names, please forgive us. We are not Korean. Correct. So, go for it. The park's house said in the film to be designed by a fictional architect named Name Gung. Hayoja, I do not. It's fine. It's okay. Was a set completely built from scratch. Holy cow, they built the entire house. That's pretty nuts. I mean, it makes sense because they did the same thing in... um Signs. Well, they did it in Signs. They also did it in... What's that? Home Alone? Oh, they built the whole... That makes sense. I mean, it makes sense if you want to control the space, house right? They built that house inside of a gym. Really? Yeah. Oh, I think I see... I in a school that, yeah. gym, yeah. Because they had to right. flood the whole thing. No, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, that's usually the best way to control an environment, right, is to build the whole set. That's interesting. Though. Actually, shooting in a home is really tough because you just don't have any space. Well, that's why if you shoot it and make it spacious so you yeah. can fit everything in there. Ki Woo's job at Home Tutor was chosen because director Bong Joon-ho realized that, sadly, the job is the only way that, that families from two extreme ends of the class spectrum in modern-day South Korea can, can cross their paths convincingly in the story arc. Okay. That wasn't really a good one. <laughs> That's fine. Well, that's what this whole movie's about is class struggle, baby. Class struggle. Oh. We'll get all into that. Oh, Don't this, you worry. All the, everything in here, this is what it's about. It's all political? <clears throat> in a way, yeah. Yeah, in but a, of course it is. In an interview with Korean magazine Cine 21, director Bong Joon-ho spoke of his experience in filming in a hyper-rich Korean home. He said his hand literally shook from anxiety when he was returning a trash can that was used as a prop. The trash can was of high-tech variety that stayed silent even when the lid was being closed. The cost as much as two hundred or $2,500. Who would spend that much for a trash can? Rich people. I don't... <sighs> If you have the money, then it's yeah, just stupid. Buy it. it doesn't make sense. Well, it's the same for a trash can. No offense, but like people spend money for on a, a lot of stupid can. shit. Like, and if you have the money, I don't care what you do with your fucking money. You a garbage I mean? can, dude. That is pretty crazy. Though you could buy a car. 
That is pretty crazy. You buy something that's more practical. It makes sense. But if you have the money, bro. All right. The film makes several nods to Alfred Hitchcock throughout. Stairs are used as a motif. Voyeurism? Is that it? V-O-Y-E-U-R-I-S-M. Is it voyeurism? 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 I think so. We're at the... Look at the pronunciation. It's used as characters watch scenes through the windows 14 times, and most obviously there is a brief glimpse of an out-of-place Alfred Hitchcock collection in the park's home. Interesting. I don't even know who Very layered, man. Very layered. Alfred Hitchcock made a lot of the classics. They, the movie that he probably re- which I watched recently, which okay, is a great movie called The Rear Window, is probably w- what he's probably probably voyeurism. What voyeurism? Why Voyeur- voyeurism? Yeah, All the right, practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others when they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. That's the and that had to do voyeurism. with the stairs. It has to do with the. St- I'm gonna I'm read it again. I'm gonna read it again because now I'm really confused. <laughs> Okay, the film makes several nods to Al- Alfred Hitchcock. Hitch- Hitchcock. 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 Cock. Cock. Throughout, stairs are used as a motif. Viarism is used as characters watch scenes through windows 14 times. Okay, so that's so that makes sense. So it's kind of like, in, in Alfred Hitchcock's The Rear Window, which he's referencing, basically there's this guy, he's broken his leg and he's stuck at home, and he's watching all of his neighbors through the back window. Yeah. And so he's watching them do all kinds of stuff. Like he's watching like really attractive women. Like there's one chick that's like a ballerina that's in one. Like he's just creeping. So that's probably what that means. It's kind of like, like the watching. Seinfeld episode with the naked chick across the way. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah, of course. Of course it is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry Seinfeld. I have no idea, Jerry. No idea. Anyway. Um, yeah. So that's what that is. Okay. The house was designed to feature lines that clearly divide the Parks and Kims. Oh, they're divided. Shot in 77 days. Wow. Well, that makes sense. I mean. With what you have, with where you're working, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was shot. The budget is really low on this movie. I think it's like $7.5 million, and it made like $282 million. You're jumping ahead. Sorry. But, I um, think. I could be wrong. I think you're wrong because it was um, <laughs> estimated budget was $11 mil, bro. Oh, my bad. My bad. Okay, so the estimated budget was what? Oh, it's still that's still not. It, it did really well. It's not a, that's not a lot of mil, money. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. For that's building a really that low, entire set. That's a low budget movie, dude. Well, made. I guess we're doing. Let's the, jump into it. Yeah, eleven mil. It was made for it, and it grossed two hundred fifty eight mil. <laughs> Opening weekend, it did not do good though. Well, because well, here's the thing. Well, this, it makes sense because it was released in. This South is Korea. what happens though. Is a lot of the time is when a movie like this gets an Academy Award, it blows up. Yeah. Right? Because then everybody wants to go see, like, one of the girls here at the coffee shop said she went and saw it in theaters here. So, like, that's what, that's a big thing about a, an Academy Award winning, a court Academy Award winning movie a lot of the time is there are these artsy fartsy movies like this, and then they get that bump from the Academy. Here, here's one I'll probably make you mad. Speaking about the black and white release of the film, Bong Joon Ho hoped. That with the colors gone, viewers could see more clearly the contrast in living conditions between the rich and the poor families. Okay. We're going to go over the philosophy I mean, this... of this film, like, later. Because, Jess, here's the thing. I want to give you an analysis strictly from a filmmaker's point of view, whether or not it's a good movie. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take, it's, it, we're going to go, let's go through the categories, let's bust it out like a normal movie, and then we can get into, um... And do it. Maybe what we should do on this one, let's go backwards. Maybe let's start with cinematography, music, acting, and then let's go into the story. Cause, All right. Because the story actually, you can't get into the story without getting into the things that it's trying to push into your mind. Right? Yeah. So let's start with that. So let's start, let's go backwards here. So we're going to go through, let's start with cinematography. Okay. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to do this one a little bit backwards. Okay, guys, I want to I review it from the, the standpoint of, is it a good movie? Is it like, what, how... Let's get these other aspects out of the way. Then we'll jump into the story and we can discuss because we'll, we'll just get into it. So let's start with cinematography. So cinematography, the way this movie shot, how are you feeling about it? Well, since we're talking about cinematography, this is kind of cool. According to the editor, Jinmo Yang, he edited the film in Final Cut Pro 7, an editing program that Apple stopped supporting in 2011 on a computer that hasn't had software updates since 2014, he received an Oscar nomination for his work. 
that's pretty cool. sick. That's pretty cool. That's cool. They also shot this in a really wide aspect ratio of 2.35, which is that makes sense because they're trying to capture so much and all the families being in the right. same shots. They have a lot of space to cover. Okay, here's on one about the rock. I can save that for later. So let's so cinematography so wise, this thing is it looks good. It's legit, man. Like they have the way all the shots, like the wide shots, like a lot of the shots that stuck out to me is like especially that intro shot through the window. Well, they end with that too. Yeah, they come which back to that a, shot a setup multiple and a payoff, times, which is really smart. Well, the family kind of lives. That's kind of like their TV in a way. Yeah, true. Everyone's watching everyone else through windows. Yeah. Once again, comes back to that whole and thing. it and it kind of ties in with like. That's why they also kind of like the house because it has that big open window yeah, in the living room. True. So there's a bunch of little t- nods and ties there. Which, Patterns. I mean, yeah, it's a really good setup, some payoffs. And um, well, I mean, and visually, it really does. I mean, it, he it does a good job really of capturing good. what it's trying to capture. The family that's living in poverty, they really capture that, and the family that's living in this wealthy extravagance, they really capture that. And yeah, I mean, I think I mean the lighting's great. The lighting sets the mood. I mean when. When they realize that there's the bunker downstairs, like that lighting just becomes super horrific. I guess it has like a really sense of this like horror going on. Well, yeah, it, I, this, I guess we can talk more about that when we get to the we story, will. but like, cause I had no idea what this was about. I've never seen a trailer for it. Right. I've only ever seen like the cover art for it. So I had going into this film, I had no idea what I was watching. And at first, just based off the name, I thought I was going to watch something that was going to be about like infections and people getting sick and yeah. dying. And I was waiting for that to come because when the house lady shows back up, yeah, to get inside she looked the like house, she was sick. Yeah. yeah, I thought she was sick. I'm like, oh, this is where no, the parasite ties going to come in. Yeah, but um, the whole parasite thing is a whole different well, meaning. Well, and we'll get into that. Yeah. But vi- so visually, visually, though, this. I mean, it's. I Is it doing anything super. No, you know, it sets everything up really well, man. It's I mean, really well done. I, I think it deserves a 10. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's well shot. There's nothing where I'm like, when the, I'm watching it, I'm not going, I, this is something I can say. I was never going, I would have shot that differently. No, the architecture, the way they work with it and they frame their shots, everything. Like, I mean, the place that the poor family lives, it's like really interesting, like architecture and stuff and all that. Right. Every single shot looks really, really good. Well, and the lighting's good, man. The lighting, yeah. I mean, when they're trying to like do, like, d- when they're trying to show certain emotions, they do a good job with changing the lighting on things, right? So, like, like I said, when you go down to the bunker, like it's like it's like a horror movie all of a sudden. Yeah. And then when you're up in the in the family room, like it's really warm, it's nice. Like the the Kim's family, which is the rich family, right? Yeah. Their house feels really nice and welcoming and warm. Even at the very end in the last scene, it's like really nice and sunny. And when everything gets, starts getting crazy, like it, it, there's like that, it's playing against the grain. Like you'd be thinking, oh, this is like hanging out on a Sunday afternoon with your family. Everyone gets together, we're having a good time. And then when crazy just starts happening, like it's, it really, they do a good job with all that. I really think. So I and I like that. So I mean, lighting, the way the framing is, the framing's set up really nice. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I think I think it deserves a ten on cinematography. I can't think of doing it a better way. You can tell a lot of time and preparation went into each shot down to the way everything was built, like you said, to, to show these windows, the way everyone's watching each other through windows. I think that was very well done. Yeah. So I think on cinematography, we'll give it a 10. I Yeah, I mean, I it was really well done. It okay. was top notch for so sure. So 10 on cinematography. Ching. Okay, see, it was shot great. We can give it that. Okay. Let's go to acting. I think acting. I think the acting's on point. Yeah, even with having to read subtitles, like... The acting, it's not. It works. Kim, is it the Kim family? Is that what it's called? Is that we got to double check some of these things? I can't I'm remember. looking. It doesn't really give me a last name on any of these guys. I'm about to jump in here. And look at so up. I'm just gonna say the Park family is the rich family. Okay, so Park. Sorry, so I've been Park, saying the Kim family. Park is the rich. So it's family. The, the Kim family is the poor family, I think. Or no, no, it's not. Sorry. So the Park family is the rich family. Park is rich, and I really liked. Um, like you were saying, even though there's, and I've I've watched subtitle movies before. When I was in Japan, we went and saw a samurai movie with Ken Watanabe, me and Trevin, and I didn't even, I, and there were no subtitles. <laughs> we just sat in the Japanese movie theater, theater and watched, watched it. it. We probably should review. It's cool because so there's a movie. It's a movie not to go on a tangent here. Um, that's made. It's a samurai movie made um, based off of Unforgiven by Clint Eastwood. So they took the the western and they basically turned it into a samurai movie. 
Um, and we, I don't know, maybe, I wonder if it'd be worth reviewing. It was a really cool movie. It'd be cool to review both those movies and like kind of contrast them. Because a lot of the times, the reason that they did that is that a lot of the times back, there was a period in Hollywood where they were taking samurai movies and turning them into westerns. And that was like a thing where you go, oh, there's this really cool samurai movie I'm going to make into, into a, a western. And so they did the opposite on this. But anyway, when we went and saw that, like, so same thing with this. Like, I've seen movies in foreign languages before, and these actors, they really do a good job. Like, I really, I'm going to be honest, I really love the dad of the poor family. Like, I like him. Like, I felt yeah. for him. Like, he seemed like a guy, like, he did such a good job portraying a guy who, like, you're like, yeah, man, you're kind of slimy and you're kind of shitty, but you seem like you're a good guy. Like, you seem like you genuinely care about your family, and it seems like you actually genuinely even care about the dad of the rich family. Like, like I was convinced, like, even when he finally, and once again, spoilers in this, guys. If you're watching this and you don't want to know what happens, don't watch this. Get out of this podcast right now. Go watch out. Go watch your Parasite. Go watch it first. <laughs> And then come watch this watch this review or listen to this review because we're gonna spoil everything. So at one point, the rich father gets mur- killed by the by the poor dad. Now I'm not convinced by his motivation to kill him. Neither am I. But I think that like I could, but like his his um at the end where he's down in the basement again, you can see that he actually is very remorseful for what he did. Like he does like that's something that they do really a good job in this movie of doing is like once again the characters are very gray. They're not completely bad or completely good. They're very human they're multi-dimensional and you get a sense from the dad the dad like really is like fuck dude yeah. i wish i hadn't done that like you know what i mean and he's even defending them like in some of the conversations with the family they'll be like he's always the one going oh wait wait you know like they're actually really nice people oh, you know wait wait like that we really shouldn't like we need to not we need to be nice to these guys you know what i mean like yeah he's always trying it seems like he's always he's kind of like the guy in the family that's trying to do the right thing it seems like to me whereas the kids are kind of like yeah whatever fuck them like this, the daughter like just straight up doesn't give a fuck. She just like no. is like burn everything down. I don't give a fuck. The mom kind of seems a little bit more like she doesn't care either, and the brother also seems like he's kind of a piece of shit. Like the dad seems to be, in my opinion, from he's my the only one. He's the only one that like really seems like a decent dude. The rest of them seem like they're shitty people, in my opinion. Yeah, in my opinion. No, I agree. Opinion. Like, and he and I like him out of all the characters, and and I feel for him because like, you feel like he's trying to kind of balance all these things. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> So he kills it, man. I think that, I think he steals the show. Actually, I think out of all the characters, he is probably my favorite. Char- I think he his acting is probably the best of the entire movie. What you don't like the eyes of the guy down in the basement, <laughs> dude? I laughed like yeah. I had to pause <laughs> and I had to rewatch it multiple times. I, I knew a, you'd be laughing. In that I pulled scene. a Sheila, dude, because I thought it was the funniest thing I've it ever was, seen. It was kind of freaky though. Oh, it was way freaky. But I think the dad. I think the guy. Who's the actor who plays the dad? Um, soon. Kin Lee. He kills it, dude. Sun, is it Sun? It, well, it's spelled Sun. Hands sun. down, hands down, he is the best part of the movie, in my opinion. He's good. I like him. He's, like, all the rest of the characters, I'm like, yeah, they're 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 not bad characters, and they do a good job acting as him, but his character has so much depth, and that's why I like his character, because his character gets to be crazy and violent and, like, just like a, like a psychopath, but then also the comforter of the rest of the he's family. Not, he's not really a psycho. That's the thing, though. I don't think anyone... That's one thing I like better about this than Joker is that they're not psychopaths. No, they feel, like, very real. Yeah, it's more of them just trying to survive. Right. So. um, Yeah, no, so I think acting... I think acting deserves... <sighs> Dude, he, he kills it, man. I really liked him. I really liked the way he played the dad. Yeah. I really do. His and facial I- expressions and, like the, like, the first shot you see him, he's like... All yeah, he's funny, dude. He's stuff. funny like, too. He's, he's he steals the show. This movie wouldn't be as good without him. Yeah, I liked him a lot. And I didn't think he was going to be that big of a part of it. Like once he got into the house and he started, and he was a driver. Like he kind of he became like because he was always with the dad. Um, so I think I mean I I don't know is it a, is it is it a freaking you know is it a Joker perform? I give it a ten, dude. There's no one in here that I'm like, dude. They didn't really feel in place like they were in place. No, I. I think I'd be cool giving it a 10, too. So 10 I on Addy. pretty solid. So Addy is a 10. Ka-ching. Um, next, we move to... Um, Music, I didn't... And now I'm getting called by my landlord, because I can't escape my landlord. What's ever. happening now? They're coming over to look at the freaking the, um, drain. For Sorry, music, go ahead. So music. On this one, I didn't notice Not memorable. It. No. I, think, I think music, it's like a 2. Like it wasn't. I, it I wasn't wouldn't even there. known. I wouldn't even known that it was there. Well, here's another. Here's something to think about too, though. Is that the music could have added a lot more, but like it was good enough to where you didn't even notice. 
that you didn't you almost didn't need music in no it. i mean and we'll go over that with story like there's yeah. there's a lot to this we're gonna break it down we're gonna break the story down next um because this is the last thing we need to go over right before we get into the story yeah um, music, yeah, music was just not really there, man. Did that help or benefit it? I don't know. I mean, once again, I think music is really important for priming our emotions. Um, it's like we've talked about. When you see a good film with good music, it sticks with you, and it also enhances the experience of the emotions of the characters. I, I think we give it a two. I think two on music. I think Because I don't weak. even remember it. No, it wasn't memorable at all. But, I mean, that's just telling you the story was good enough that it didn't need it. But but that's I mean, here's the it, thing though. It did have a score though. There was music, but yeah, it, I'm but, not, like, but once again, no, it's not John Williams. I'm not gonna. All. I'm not gonna it's say not that. Zimmer. I'm gonna say it would be. It probably would be better if it had better music. I agree. So so we'll give it a two on music, and um, let's move into the story because this two, is where ten, the meat. That's where the that's where the mate the, the mate the mate the mate of this movie is. The mate is right here. So we got a ten on cinematography, cinematography acting. We got ten on acting. And we've got two on music. Now, let's move into the story here. So the whole basis of this film is a family who's really poor living in South Korea who can't get by and sees no other means of surviving other than basically lying and taking advantage of a rich and wealthy family. Hence the name Parasite. Now, the guy, who, the director who, who made this movie, um, he doesn't hide that this movie is a political movie. This movie is all about pushing certain ideas and politics. Now... This is not a political podcast, so we're trying. I'm trying to anal- analyze the story from the, stand- the standpoint of what makes a good film and a good story, a good screenplay. And you know, I'm going to be honest in that analysis. Okay, I'm, I'm not on here to shit on a movie because unlike the other side of people who who are who are a certain political stance, I don't decide if something's good based on whether or not it fits what I want to see. Like politics wise if it's done well if it's executed well if it's doing all if it's following all the tenets of what makes a good film i'm going to give it a good i'm going to give it a good review i'm going to like it right um i'm not going to base it on whether or not i agree with the person who made the movie because i that has nothing to do with whether or not the movie is a good movie it doesn't so if it's a good movie it's a good movie if it's not it's not um so i just want to get that out right now so the base of the story is this poor family which is the park family no, the rich family's part. Sorry, the rich family's the park family. The poor family. Just remember, is rich park, park rich. Well, respect park. That was great too. Respect. That was a great scene too, man. <laughs> oh god, this movie actually has a lot, a of, lot of good stuff. This movie, in it, okay, story wise, like this movie is really well laid out. So I wasn't. That part was funny, dude. I was laughing. I wasn't prepared for. Well, it's kind of a black what, comedy. Yeah. Well, that's a great plot point turn that in the story too. So anyway, so let's set this up. Got the Park family, so it consists of the mom and the dad, who we've talked about, the dad we've already talked about a lot, um, and then a son and a daughter. Now, the movie opens up with us seeing where they live. It's a shot that shoots out the back window. Once again, Austin made a good point, too. I didn't realize that that is a metaphor throughout the entire movie. And this is a setup, and we'll get a payoff at the very end of the movie. The end of the movie ends with the exact same shot, looking out the window with these socks that are hanging over here in the left-hand part of the frame. And, um, and... It's, I mean, it's a great establishing shot. You, we find out where these guys live, how they live. There's a guy pissing in the back in the at back alleyway because he's drunk. There's some funny stuff there where they're like, and once again, even the dad, the dad right here, like they're like, we should go out there and confirm. Him. And the dad's like, no, no, no. Like once again, the dad is it's always his, it's his an entertainment man. Well, that's that, but like he's not like an asshole. You know what I mean? Like he isn't no, he's like he, he's like going. He's defending him. Yeah, he's defending the drunk guy again because he's because the dad is a decent dude, man. He's a decent guy. Um, and so anyway, we kind of start to find out their situation. You can see they're living in poor. They're not living. They're living in poor circumstances. There's four of them in this small space. I mean, the bathroom is is tiny. Everything's really small. And we're introduced to all of them really quick. And it, it looks, it's really funny because it looks like the main character is going to be the son. Because it's the sons who is who we're kind of following. They're trying to get work so they can pay. They eat. You can tell they, that they're having a hard time to get by. And um, the sons there, they're all kind of talking about about different things that are going on in their lives, who's going to university, who's not, um, looking for work, and how they can't find work, how they're waiting to hear back from calls. And then we're introduced to the son's friend who shows up. And the son almost seems like he doesn't want him to be there. He almost seems kind of like embarrassed that he's coming to his house. Yeah. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, oh, he's not coming here. And he actually comes up to where the guy's pissing and, and shoes him off. They tie the pee guy in here a lot. They do. And so then he comes in and he's brought this rock, which is a setup as well for later in the film. Because um, once again, 
A good story, if you introduce a prop, that prop should be used at some point in the movie. Nothing's introduced for no reason. Nothing's there without a purpose. And that's something that this guy does really well. I'm um, the director and the writer of this movie. I got to give him credit there. He knows how to set, do setups and payoffs. And he does a great job in this movie the entire way through. So this rock is basically a gift to bring them good luck, for, luck from this, the friends. Um, I think grandfather. He collects these. And um, he's given to the family. And, of course, you know they're like, thank you so much. And he says, hey, can I, can I talk, can we go out and, you know, can I talk to you, to his friend? So they go out to eat, they're out, like, hanging out somewhere at a cafe. And he basically goes, hey, you know, I'm going to travel abroad. There's this family that I uh, tutor for, their daughter who's in high school, and I got a huge crush on her. I want someone that I can trust to look after while I'm out traveling because I'm going to ask her out when she goes into school, in the, in the college. And, um, and he goes, and he even says, he goes, and the mom's pretty simple. She's pr- basically, she's stupid. Like, don't worry, there's no way she'll know that you're not legit, that you're not, like, a college student. We can totally scam her, you know, and it, I need you to do that so I can have peace of mind while I'm gone because I want to bone the daughter later on. And the friend goes, yeah, that's, like, at first he's kind of hesitant. He's like, yeah, how, are they going to know that I'm not, like, a student? And once again, he's like, don't worry, these guys are idiots. They're rich idiots, don't worry. Um, and so he's like, all right, he buys into it, accepts it. He goes over to meet the mom, and she's very like, hey, listen, if you're not up to the same standard as your friend... I'm not going to keep you to teach my daughter. Like immediately, like you need to make sure you're good, and I'll let you know if you're not. And I'm going to sit in on sit in on your tutoring list. Well, the setup for the mom too. He shows up and she's like outside, sleeping out yeah. on the table. Yeah, that's a good point too. And the house lady has to wake her up. Right. Well, so that, you can kind of tell that she's like kind of checked out. Yeah. Well, a good point too that you made is uh, that I didn't think about too is that for him to get ready for this, we also find out more about his sister. So his sister ends up helping him forge documents. To, um, his sister's a really good con on To make it look like he legit, legitimately went to like a school over in the U.S. I think, I don't know, it was in Illinois or the University of Chicago. And it's funny, there's a great scene here, and Austin makes a good point. We were talking this the other day where there's, and the father's like, you would be, you would make a great whatever, you know, con artist creating these things. Like, I don't know why you're... And, and Austin makes a good point. Like, if this family is so smart and talented at doing all these things, why is it that they have to resort to ripping off... Rich people. Yeah, the Park family. To make money. Like, Why? Like, I, I must not really convince him. Once again, we don't know all the situations in South Korea. I'm not familiar with the culture there or or what the actual state of affairs are. Well, um, you know. Well, according to Google, South Korea is known for its rise from one of the poorest countries in the world to a developed high-income country in just a few generations. Okay, so but the question is. They're is, rich now. Right. But, but before they were very poor. But the question is, is like, are, is there that it's this, the whole point of this movie is trying to say, look at these really rich people and look at these really poor people and look at the gap, and that's not fair. I do not, I don't know how true that is, right? Like, I've guys, never been to South Korea. Be honest with yourselves. In the U.S., the people who are in poverty can literally get on welfare and they make plenty of money. I know someone I just barely recently talked to. She got fired from her job, and guess what? She's not looking for a job. You want to know why? I hope she doesn't listen to her. Did you tell her she, that? She, she, <laughs> well, even if she does, and this is not anything against her, I think that's fine. Do what you want. I'm not here to tell you what to do. But this idea that there's all these people living out on the street. I've lived in extreme poverty. I've lived where I had no fucking money, and I was literally eating. I was getting donations from a local food bank because I couldn't survive. Okay, I've been there. You know what? I didn't starve. And you know what? I'm good now. So this whole thing about the rich against the poor, dude, I'm sorry. Like, well, the rich against the poor in America is different compared that's, to other countries. I don't know. Is it, though? I, I mean, it could it, be. It is, it is compared to other countries, but I'm just saying that the hard thing with me on the South Korean thing is this could be totally pulled out of this guy's ass. Not to say there aren't people struggling, because I'm not saying people don't struggle. I've struggled. I have struggled to where I didn't know how I was going to get by, dude. So I, don't, I, can t- I can talk about this. I've been there. Okay, um, but to act as if the only solution you have is to fucking rip off rich people is wrong. That's my only point. So anyway, sorry, we'll get more into that later. But anyway, back to the story. So that's what they end up doing. So he ends up going to this rich family, and yeah, we established that she's kind of checked out. She's sleeping. You're right. He wakes her up. The lesson goes really well. He t- he totally. There's a great setup here too. He's sitting there teaching the um, tutoring the daughter, and he t- checks her pulse. And he's like, you need to calm down. Basically, you need to, like, change your mindset. That's why you're not doing well on these tests. And that's a setup for later between those two, which was great. Once again, that's great writing. Um, But basically, he passed the test. He's going to get hired. He's in. He's he's done it. Um, From here, do you remember where we hopped to from here? From here, he's leaving the home, and they've seen the son's art. It's all crazy, and he's, like, talking with 
the mom about like how amazing it is and stuff and and while they're leaving totally bullshitting her he's like this means this yeah yeah this corner like yeah well, totally like, the corner thing there. doesn't come in until no, you're right, the sister but he is like in. totally bullish. He's just priming it, yeah. So then on his way out, the other thing I notice is another setup and payoff is that every time on their way out in that same little spot, that's how they get the next person in. That's where they're talking about, other than the driver. Okay. Or no, the driver, the, the daughter does the driver there too, and then the driver gets the the mom in later. Right there. No, but that dri- they're driving in that one. No, I that's a though. different one. But yeah. yeah, they definitely did a kind of because it's like the same type of patterns. shots. Yeah, but um, we didn't talk about how nice the house. Well, I guess if anyone's the nicest it's house, it's a nice, a nice house. I mean, house. Yeah. these guys are loaded. They are loaded. They have tons of money. So much money that they can do whatever the fuck they want. Well, yeah. When the dad comes in, at first you're like, "Oh man, these lights are legit," and right. they turn on every time. Right, they go that's up. a setup. That's another too. great setup and payoff. Um, yeah, there's these lights in the hall, entrance hallway when he comes in. Yeah, that are turning on. You're like, oh, that's just while he's tech. going up the steps. Yeah, um, and also like you get the sense that this family is they're not bad people. Like at first they seem kind of snooty, but like they like as it carries on, you start to realize that they're not. I think that they're not. They're not terrible, right? And so from here, the brother says, "Well, I know I had a, a friend who who has a friend." Who's an art major or whatever, and she can, you know, maybe help with your son and his issues. He, she can come and help him, and she's yeah. great with kids. And he's like, yeah, that'd be great. Let me know. And and he's setting it up so he can get his sister in. So this parasite, which is him feeding off this rich family, starts to grow here because next he brings in his sister. Yep. And his sister totally bullshits the whole thing. Is like, yeah, she looks stuff up on Google. Yeah, she's like art therapy and I can help your son because he's obviously suffering from schizophrenia and this over here in the corner of this painting means schizophrenia and just totally is bullshitting it. And she's very controlling too. Like the mom wants to sit on the first life yeah, and she's, she's like, like you no. must leave. Yeah. You she's, must leave. You must go. The brother's just like, no, yeah. I, I do not work with anyone else in here. And, um, and immediately the mom just buys into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Something happened when he was younger and we need to address this. And I think that's great. And, and just a mom who cares about her kid. Yeah. Like obviously she's being stupid about it. But her heart's in the right place, I think. Yeah. Which is, I'll throw money at the problem, and it will go away. Which is the wrong way to handle it, but her motivations are right, I think. Um, And so the daughter, boom, now she's there. She's tutoring the kid. And she's getting more. She's getting paid, too. And she she's getting paid even more. She's yeah, coming she, in more, longer lessons. Right. She hustles even more. Yeah. Um, And so that's set up. We kind of get introduced to the dad, and the dad, and, all, and this and from here, after her lesson, she's driving with the driver. He's giving her a ride home. And you tell he's kind of digging her. He wants to, you know... Get it on. Yeah. Um, but not like a creep or anything. I mean... He just wants to be nice and take her to right. the house. Right. And so... But she immediately starts to set up something where she's like, okay, how can I get the driver fired so I can get my dad in here? Yeah. And so she drops her panties off inside the fucking car, knowing the dad's going to get a ride from his driver the next day and find these panties. Also, before that, circling back, we also see the, the brother with the daughter that he's tutoring for the rich family, and the daughter's like, do you like her? And it's funny because it's, it's funny because the... The brother's like, no, because it's his sister. She doesn't know that. Yeah. But immediately, we're also finding out that she has a crush on him. Um, and right here, I think, I want to say this is where she touches his pulse and checks his pulse. No, it's later. Is that later? Okay. So never mind about that. But anyway, so we kind of set that up. So anyway, on the drive home, she leaves out, leaves her panties, has the driver drop her off at the station. Sure enough, the next day, the dad gets in the car, finds a pair of panties in there, and is like, what the fuck? Like, why are these in here? He doesn't say anything to the... To the driver, but like he's thinking, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. So he gets home and tells his wife, hey, I found these panties in there. Why the fuck does he have the fuck in my car? Can he at least, you know, fuck somewhere else? Like, yeah. And it's kind of a, it's, this movie panties does a great job of. set up too. What? The panties are They are set too, up yeah. Too. Yeah. And there's a great, there's a great balance here between comedy and the serious. That's something that this guy does really well too. Like there's funny shit, that, like the way they're talking and stuff is hilarious. Yeah. And also like it's a serious thing, right? Because this family is. Beating off this other family. Well, so, so even the dad, though, he's like, I don't want to jump to any conclusions right, right, right off the bat. Right, right. Yeah. He's like, he doesn't really want to fire the driver because they like this young kid. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, there's a really good job here because, like, the, the dad, you also get the sense, is a good dude, yeah. a rich dad. He seems like a decent guy. Oh, and he's a really good dad to his son, too. Yeah, that's true, yeah. too. No, like, there really is that sense that he's not just a piece of shit. Yeah, this family is a good family the mom's a little like out there out there yeah well that's another thing that the other dad the poor dad oh rich dad poor dad we yeah just do that yeah so poor dad when he starts driving he's always asking him like do you really love your wife yeah that's a good point 
So we'll see. And there's kind of a weird thing there too, where like it seems like he's trying to move in on her too. There's a scene where he grabs her hand, and it's kind of weird, and it lingers on there for a minute. Oh yeah. Um, but once again, it does a really good job of graying everything. Everything is really gray. There's not really stark black and white until the very last third, last act of this movie, and then it's like it's boom, 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 and it's going. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so from here. The sister's now working there. Now they're sitting up to get their dad in as a driver. So immediately we kind of see them talk to dad. Hey, have you ever drove a, a Cadillac or not a Cadillac? Um, Mercedes. Bentley or Mercedes. Yeah. And all these things. Like, no, I never have. It shows them like at a car dealership, like sitting in the car, learning all the pieces of it. Yeah. They're and very kind of prepping him. They're very planned out. Very thorough in their yeah, scheme. The like, son, it's very believable. The son is very organized and he wants to make sure that this family believes the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the scam? The scam, I'm thinking of a different word, but it's okay. They want to believe, they want to basically pull the curtain over these guys. Yeah, they want to make it sure up. it's legit. Yeah, on every aspect, too. Because like, right. even when they get their mom in, the way they set that up is super clever. Right, and right. Super it's, smart. And it's really well shot. I mean, yeah. well, that's something I really like about this, too, is it's believable. Like, it is believable. The oh, way yeah. that a lot of these things happen, it doesn't feel forced. It it's feels not, pretty believable. It's not until the end where, I start, having, yeah, where I start having issues. Because like, I thought they're... Towards the end, I thought they were going to take it a different direction. I did too. And I'm like, okay, what are they going to do from here? Right. Well, let's at get, first I was thinking like there's there, going to be some kind of weird sickness. That's thing what I thought. Well, get. I, well, so we'll get so we'll get there. So yeah. from there, so from there, they get the dad in there, obviously, and and the dad or the um, the husband, but even he's like, I don't want anyone to know that we fired him because he was fucking in my car. It's also not because he's trying to be nice. It's also like it will hurt our reputation. Yeah. So find some reason to get rid of him. I don't care what it is. We need to get rid of him. And sure enough, they get rid of the him. sister. Then sets up the dad to become the driver for the for the rich dad to set up poor dad for driving for the rich dad. She goes, yeah. "Oh yeah, there was a great driver that this friend of mine, the family had, but the family moved out of the country. He might be available. He's older, stable, really nice guy." And the mom's like, "Yeah, great, send him over." And so sure enough, boom, Mister Kim is his Mister Kim is his his pseudo his pseudonym. It's his yeah. I, his fake identity. And so he shows up and he's driving. And something that. The dad makes a good point. Well, the dad like makes a point to him. He goes, the rich dad makes a poor dad. He goes, hey, you know, just I don't like it when my people try to cross the line. They know like what the line is between professionalism and being my, you know, my friend. Like be, you're my driver, you know. Yeah. And so there's that fine line they're walking, and the dad like just takes to the to the to it super well. Like, he's immediately just like, yeah, I've been doing this for years, and you've been doing it for twenty years. He's like, he's like, you're, he's like, your turning's really good. He's like, yeah, he's like, it's one of the biggest principles of being a driver, and you're, he's just totally selling. Oh, and the rich dad in the back's holding has a cup a coffee of coffee. Cup to see if he spills it, which yeah. is a great visual as well. It's a great way to test. Yeah, it's really. I mean, it's he does a good job, dude. Storytelling wise, he's a good storyteller. The director. No, he's great. Yeah. Um. So from there, the dad's now in there. They're doing their thing. Next is how do we get rid of this fucking ha- this goddamn. Uh, Housekeeper, the housekeeper, because she because we got to get her. She's been there a long time. And she, she was there before the family bought the house. Yeah, and so they find out. This is where the brother's sitting with the with the daughter, and they're doing a lesson. And this is where they find out how they're going to get rid of her because he's sitting there. And this is where she checks. So they're kind of flirting, kind of talking here, and the girl, the daughter, who's being taught by the poor kid, the poor son, checks his pulse, and um, his pulse is racing. So it's a setup and payoff from before where he's checking her pulse. And she's like, "Your pulse is racing," and then they kiss. Because she's like, you know, oh, well, you're really obviously nervous because you like me. And then she talks about how I wish we could have peaches. We never going to have peaches in my house. And he's like, why not? And he's like, she's like, because the housekeeper's allergic. So right there, the family goes, oh, she's allergic. That's how we're going to get rid of This is how we're going to get rid of her. Yeah. So they decide they're going to sneak some peaches in, make her sick. Well, they shave off the peach fuzz. And yeah. And they start sprinkling it over. And, it, and those are great shots. Yeah. Really well done. Where they, And then she starts to get sick. She has to leave one day to go to the, to the emergency room or the hospital. And Mr. The dad's the dad, there. Poor dad's there. And he takes a photo. And this part I wasn't really convinced by, though, either. This seemed kind of yeah, kind of wonky. I was like, all right, like, I guess. Like, why? Like why? You know what I mean? Well, they're trying to make it look like she has some type of I know. sickness. Well, she has, get... like, um, what is it? Tuberculos- tuberculosis. Yeah. And so they're kind of setting up to go, hey, she's really sick. You don't want that around your kid, do you? Like, you want your child to be safe. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because I don't want your kid oh, to yeah, be safe. Oh, yeah, she pulls him into the steam room, too. That's Who'd... what the... Poor dad and yeah. the mom. So poor Which dad kind of goes, hey, I didn't want to say anything, but while I was at the hospital the other day, I saw this. The housekeeper was there. I think she might have tuberculosis. because this is what I overheard, and that's kind of dangerous. You don't want her to pass that to your son. And the mom's like, oh, my gosh. Because once again, knowing that this mom is so – like she's a helicopter parent over her son, 
he knows that he can use this to you know his advantage. Yeah. And of course, they're all working together. The daughter keeps sprinkling um, fuzz when she passes the housekeeper to set it up. The dad comes in with some hot sauce and sprays it into the garbage bin like she was coughing up blood at one point. Yep. And basically, he's convinced the mother, you need to get her out of here. She's medically She's sick. Yeah. And she feels bad. They don't want to do it, but you know they convince they convince her. And so she and right here there is a weird scene where they're in the steam room, and the dad's like saying, you know, I just care, I just care about you guys, and like he touches the mom's hand, and you almost wonder if something's about to go down there, then it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and it's great because like even before that, you see once again there's a really good job here where the director shows the preparation for the scam because they actually have the dad reading all these lines to the family before yeah. they go and do it. The inner cunning at home, cunning the poor dad is. Yeah. Um, it's really well done that way. So basically, they convince her. The housekeeper gets kicked out. You, you feel pretty bad for her. You're like, what the fuck, man? And who gets brought in? The mom does. The mom is in, and they make a fake organization that the right. dad sets set up it all and gives up. a card. Once to again, rich dad. very well prepped, man. Yeah, that very stuff well prepared. Is, that stuff's well done. It really adds to you on buying what they're trying to do. Going, yeah. oh yeah, I can see them doing this. And they had a phone that has the number that they're going to call. A card and everything. The dad drops it up. off, sets it up with the poor dad gives it to the rich dad. Rich dad passes it to mom. She calls, it, and the best part is in this fake organization to get her to come be the housekeeper they got to pay a subscription fee and give them all this personal information yeah too so she gives them all this information that so probably she, she shouldn't yeah at this point i was thinking man this family's just gonna rip this family and off them. and kill them that's and take what i the was house. thinking too yeah so but it doesn't go that way which once no. again is kind of nice because you didn't see it coming right no, so i definitely what they where they went with this i didn't see it coming it, you did a, it's really well done that way man it's yeah. a good story it's a good it's good storytelling so from here, now the family's established they're in there, man. They The whole house is being ran by this poor family. They're all related, but the rich family has no idea because they're so oblivious and stupid. And this is where plot point one comes in the story, where things change. Because the goal has been, let's get all these, let's get our entire family employed by these guys so we can re- get as much money as we can. They're sitting around a table even talking about, man, we're living so well off this family. We're doing so well. If we keep doing this. And um, the family goes, hey, we're going to go on vacation. We're taking our son out for his birthday to go camping. The son has this thing where he really loves Indians and cowboys, and he's always shooting a bow and arrow and stuff. It's something that kind of goes out throughout the film. And so they go, all right, we're going to leave. So, of course, the poor family's like, well, great. We're just going to fucking hang out while you guys are gone. So they, so the family leaves. There's a storm, and we kind of see this family sitting together. The poor family's using this house. Like, the daughter's up in the up in the bathroom taking a nice bath and Watching TV, the the son's being a creep and reading all the journals of the girl that he's of the girl that he's teaching the poor the poor son. Yeah. Um. The dad and the mom are sitting there, just drinking and hanging out in the front room, and doing anything they want, and they're watching. And then they're all staring out that back window. Yeah. So they sat their own back window, but instead of looking at a guy pissing in the alleyway, they're looking at a beautiful yard. Lightning storm in a beautiful yard. Yeah. And they're just kind of sitting there, and you're like, and that's where I was saying with you. I'm like waiting. I'm like they're, and then they're all sitting there together as a family, and they're talking, and I'm waiting for them to go. Well, we need to remove this family so we can take over. And Either that's that, not where it went. Well, at that point, too, I was thinking, like, okay, I know what's going to happen. Family's going to come home. Right, right. Like, they're going to come home and during I'm like, this. I, I'm, I'm like, like waiting for it the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I'm just, like, nervous. I'm like, dude, I wouldn't be sitting yeah. there. Like, and that part's great. The tension is so well so, built up here. You're like, At this point dude. in the movie, I was, like, I was at the point to where it, I mean, it perfectly built everything up to this point. Like, Throughout the entire movie, like so you right. understand all the characters, you know you think you know where this is going, but you don't. Right. And you're fully in on this ride now. Right. Because from here, the rest of the movie, I had parts where I had to pause the movie and stand up and be like, Dude, I can't watch this anymore, man. Cause like it's getting so crazy, it was giving me anxiety. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Man. It was I, that good, dude. I didn't get that. I mean, I, I was nervous for them, but I wasn't like, I didn't have to stop anything. Well, it's like, well, the way they do it is so practical. It's like, and that's what makes it a, a good, good film. film. Yeah, because like I was connecting with the emotion. Right. And it was like really riled. It was getting me riled up. Yeah. And I was just like, holy cow. Like, well, and, well, and here's it was the, making me nervous for the family. Well, like you said, like, like I, well, because you don't want them to get caught. No, you like, don't. Even though you're like, you even though you're, for yeah, right. That it does a good job of that. Yeah, the empathy, the building of empathy for the characters and connecting with them. Yeah, really well done on both sides. Yeah, because you're also like, man, you're like, because you're well, because once again, a good script or a good story, like I've told you before that we've talked before, is putting your characters in situations that you're like, how the fuck are you gonna get out of this? No, this movie does it. Like, to how, a like how are you gonna do it? Because and not and not lazily solving the problem. 
but like continuing to make the problem bigger and then having your characters try to find better and better ways to solve the problem. Well, the whole situation that they get well, into. Well, and this is what happens, right? Yeah. So they're sitting there and you're like, okay, this is already a problem. You're like, they're faking all this stuff. What happens when the friend comes back and he finds out the entire family's working for this family? Or that too, yeah. Like, or what happens when the family comes home and they have to clean up all this mess? You're like, dude, this is not this a is good bad, situation. Yeah. It's like almost like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or like guys um, taken weird it science far. where you're like the kids have the house, the family's gone, and the kid's like having a party over the weekend and like his rich dad's going to come home any minute and bust him. Yeah. Classic scenario. It's not really anything new per se that we haven't seen before, but they do, he does a really good job of laying those pieces in place. So you're like, all right, what's going to happen? Well, all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and you're like, fuck, the family's home. Well, no, it's the it's the housekeeper that they got The fired. old housekeeper. And she looks fucking terrible like you can tell like she has like a cut on her lip she just yeah. looks really not well well another thing we forgot about too is that um is it does the dad talk about how the other because he's like worried about the other drivers like, you think the other driver um the yeah, other driver once again fine? the he, dad cares, he cares about dude. everyone yeah that's, that's that's why it's so weird at the end that he kills well, mr yeah. park man no well that's what I'm, that's the that's thing. that's why i'm not believing it that's the thing the dude's dude is, too good of a right dude because he cares about everyone in that right. house that they screwed over so they could and, get in and he's he's the anchor to yeah. me like, that's why i think he's such he's the strongest character um because he is you're right he's asking, like i hope that driver found another job and he also is like, you know, they're really nice people. These people are really nice, you guys. Like, they're really a nice, like, they're really a nice family. Like, they are good people. Well, and then they make a good point right here. They make a point here where they're like, well, when you're rich, it's easy to be nice. You can be nice when you're rich. That yeah. is part of the dialogue, too. And it's like, fuck off. That shit pisses me off, dude. That's the kind of shit that it's like, that's fucking straight up propaganda. Fuck you. Now, that's a viewpoint, and those characters have that viewpoint. It makes sense for who they are in the story. But once again, storytelling, and this is where we can kind of start to get into it. Storytelling is not only about telling a good story, but what message are you telling? What are you trying to get me to buy into here, right? Like, I mean, honestly, something that we should be aware of when we're watching movies, and like, and yeah, we're watching, them for, we're watching them for the story, we're watching them to be entertained. But once again, we taught this: there is an actual reason why stories are a thing. It's not just to entertain you, not just to have fun. They're there to teach you things. And what this movie's trying to tell you, in Money a way, makes you happy. It makes your life easy. Well, not just that, but that, like, that's the problem with the world. The problem with the world is you could be a really nice person, but you got to have money. If you have money, you can be really nice Which and is stupid. Which crap. Right, and that's why, that's yeah. that's the hic- that's the holdup I have with this film when it comes to that part of it. Like, the story, and here's the thing, guys. This is not me with a conspiracy theory reading into this. Go and read about the fucking guy who made the movie. He is quoted saying, basically, yeah. The wealth inequality is our problem in the world, and this is what we need to solve. And, and what I want to know, director... Whatever the heck his name is, I'm, I can't remember what it is off the top of my name, off the top of my head. What's your fucking? What's your solution? What's your solution for wealth inequality, motherfucker? Tell me, because what's well, the alternative's not better? Well, it's funny that he says that because, like, uh, is it Maya? Maya, who's that? Maya, the one on, on the shoot. Oh, Maya, the, the girl that came up and helped us from yeah, Ethiopia. Yeah, where's she from? Ethiopia. From Ethiopia. Yeah. So it's funny because we were talking to her about Ethiopia and how those people over there, I mean, they're poor. Yeah, and they don't have vehicles. Some of them don't have shoes. They're living on dirt, dirt floors. And she was talking about how much happier they are. Yeah, way, and they're poor. Like, and then you, she comes over here, and she's saying like America's a, a lot different because people here have money. They have the things they need. Like, they're and still over not there, happy. yeah, and they're still unhappy. Yeah. So it's like I, sorry, dude. I think you're wrong on that point because right. like. When you have less, I think you appreciate what you do have and you're more happy. Well, and I think the whole thing of happiness is a fucking misconceived idea. Life's not about being happy. You're not going to be happy all the time. If you think you need to be happy all the time, you got a problem. You need to learn how to fucking deal with not being happy sometimes. Because you're going to be less happy than you're going to be happy. No one gets up every day and is like, I'm just the happiest person on the planet because I have tons of money. Like, so once again, going back to, back to the movie, though, it's a great little scene and, like, the dialogue's there and whatnot, and it's it's a great little scene. Well, yeah, so this housekeeper shows up. Whoa, okay, monkey wrench. What the fuck are we going to do? The mom's like, I'm going to answer the door really quick because I'm here watching the house anyway. You guys go hide. They all go and hide. And the housekeeper's like, well, I forgot something. Can I please come in? And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And you're like, all right, whatever. What does she got to get from the basement? Yeah, well, that's the thing. So she yeah. lets her in. The mom, poor mom lets in the old housekeeper, walks her over, and she goes, well, yeah, I see her downstairs to the basement really quick and grabs him. Do you want to come with me? And that part's kind of weird. He's like, I don't know. Oh, this lady's going to kill this Yeah, lady. like, what the fuck's yeah. going on here? And um, and you already know something's going to turn dark here. And the mom's like, no, go ahead. I'll wait for you. So he goes down there. She's taking all this time. He's like, what the fuck? What's taking her so long? She sneaks down to see what's going on. Well, the kid's 
Well, the kids are all there too. Well, the kids started telling her like, "Hey, go see what the yeah, go see going what's on. going on. Like, go check yeah. it out." So she runs down there and goes downstairs, and there's a secret door that's been opened over where this case is, where there's where, and that's been set up Food as well, storage. which is really smart as yeah. well. Because someone runs out there to get some plunges Same earlier shot on every yeah. time, yeah, which is great. It's a great setup and payoff here. Once again, because nothing is in this movie that doesn't belong. Yeah, that's another thing that makes this movie really good is every single thing has a purpose for the most part. Well, no, good for they shower. all do. They all do. For From the peach, yeah. the peach allergy, the windows in both houses, the setup of the the ro- racing pulse on the daughter, um, everything. It all has a purpose, the rock. So anyway, she goes down there and realizes there's a secret fucking staircase behind this fucking this shelf. Well, she goes down there and she's like pu- trying to push it. Yeah, that's right. And, and she, she can't starts get it to help her and she falls off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she asks her, right? So yeah, she's like, help, like, help me open this. Yeah. And so they open it, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then they go down there, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And this is yeah. where the lighting changes. It gets this really where creepy. Everything and starts still, getting nuts. And you're like, what's going on? You get down there, and her husband's down there. <laughs> this old housekeeper's husband's been living in the basement, and he looks fucking crazy, bro. He looks like a psycho. He's insane. You can tell, like, he's been down there for fucking too Boy, long. Boy, he is insane. Yeah, well, and he's like, I don't want to leave down here. This is where I want to be forever. And you're like, what like the fuck? Down here. So you find out here. So the housekeeper's like, please let my husband stay here. He has all these debt collectors. They're trying to get after him. Because once again, he's too poor and he just can't. And so I've been letting him live down here while I've been keeping taking care of this house. Yeah. And I feed him and bring him food. Well, you bring him food and I'll even pay you all the money that, that I have to do this. That was another payoff and, or set up and payoff too. Because like the dad was saying, oh, our old housekeeper, she yeah, eats for she two. Yeah, eats a lot. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. It's a really good point. Yeah, once again, really well, good then, writing there. And there, that, that makes the housekeeper a liar because she tells that lady, I was paying for it. I was paying for the food. Was she? No, she wasn't. But she said that to the poor mom. Oh, Remember? did she? Yeah, she's down there like, oh, I pay for all of it out of my own salary. Ah. Uh, and But then the dad's like, she eats for two. Right. So, I mean, it's... That's a good point. I mean, once again, it is what it is. Yeah, so, well, go ahead. No, go. <laughs> but, um... But she's like, yeah, he's down here. Will you please, like, and she's, like, offering it. So, and you can tell she's so desperate, dude. She's, like, looks really haggard. And the mom's like, no, you need to get out of here. Like, I'm going to. I'm going to call is, the cops. And this is the part that's fucked up, right, is here's this r- poor family who's ripping off this rich family who finds out that the other housekeeper was ripping off this rich family, too. And they're like, well, fuck you. I'm going to call the police on you. Yeah. Because what you're doing is wrong. And it's like, fuck you. You're a piece of shit, too. You're in the same. Sh- like, it's like, and this is what's really interesting. It's like. Okay, so the rich people, so the, these people are all victims of society. It's not their fault they're doing these things. They're doing them because Korean society is so tough. This is what they have to do. Um, but at the same time, the other poor people are just as, are more vicious to the other well, poor people. Well, now they have money. Yeah, and they're like, fuck you. You're the one who's ripping off this family. I can't believe you're doing this. And this is where there's a great part where the rest of the family's kind of listening to this whole thing up in the staircase and they fall out. And now the old housekeeper's like, aha! You're also assholes because yeah. you're doing the same. And she takes a bunch of photos of them all sitting there, well, a video actually, and the kid's like, Dad, get off me because they're all laying on top of each other. And she's like, now I have you by the balls. And so now you just kind of see them being like, well, fuck you. Yeah. And then they're upstairs all together making this family do all these different things going, if you do anything, I'm going to send this message off to the family. They're going to know you're ripping well, them the off. Dad, yeah, they start saying it's like launching like a, a nuclear missile. missile like the North Koreans. Yeah. And there's some funny shit there with the, where he's like, I've missed you, wife, and your funny jokes and some banter between them. And yeah. you can tell that that couple that loves each other. they're listening to music on a recording. Right. On a record. Right. And yeah. it kind of shows a flashback of them before when they used to do the same thing that the, that the poor family's the doing now, window, right? Oh, yeah, and use the building. And it's just... Yeah. And the then parasites. here's... And now here is where the thing kicks in that you were waiting to happen. The family's on the way home. Well, not yet. Oh, my bad. No, no. Okay, you're right. Because they... they they wait for their moment to attack and right. they go and get so the, the phone. So yeah, so the so the old housekeeper has the phone and she ends up I don't remember how they get it out of her hand. Somehow she drops it and the whole family's fighting and the, the poor family is trying to get from the housekeeper and the husband the phone so they can get rid of the ev- evidence. And this shit starts escalating way more than it should. Yeah. That's right. So it just keeps escalating and eventually they start fighting, they get a hold of them, um, and they're trying to subdue them and get them down into the basement. And what happens is during this, then the family, the rich family calls and goes, Hey, we're on our way home, we want we want this type of food made. Can you make it? The mom from the poor family is like, oh, shit, I don't even know how to make that. And then there's a mess here, and we're trying to get these guys back in the fucking basement. What are we going to do? Yeah. So shit just escalates. I mean, you're just like, okay. And they're 15 minutes away. Yeah, this is 
this is where I was like, holy cow. This like, is really how, well played. How are they going to get out of this situation? Because it, it is just great. It's the worst possible situation. Well, because the thing is, you could have just be. done it without showing all of a sudden the housekeeper comes back. Because that's really what the housekeeper coming back changes the entire direction of the story. Yeah. Because you could have had them as coming home and being like, how the fuck are you get out of this? But the housekeeper going, I've been hiding my husband in this safe bunker that's built for rich people in case we get attacked by North Which Korea. Which the family doesn't even know about. Right. Yeah. It's a twist. And you're like, and that changes everything. That's where oh, things yeah. really start to change and take a darker turn because. Rich family's coming back, so there it shows the sister trying to clean shit up. The son's trying to run upstairs and put the diaries back where they were at. Um, the husband's taking care of getting the people downstairs, getting the because they've got them subdued now. The old housekeeper and the husband of the old housekeeper, and then the mom's trying to fucking make dinner so it's ready before the family gets home. And things are just like escalating. You're like, how the fuck are they getting out of this? The son ends up hiding underneath the bed just as the family's getting home. The daughter hides underneath the table in the front room. The dad. He's downstairs. He ends up downstairs trying to. He's trying to keep he's the husband. Them up. The, he's the husband down there, but yeah. the wife escapes and she oh, goes so running they, upstairs. Another thing they did is they dump peaches on, on the wife, well. so she's yeah. like having an allergic a, a, reaction. Yeah, so she's kind of passed what out. What kills her? What? Well, she's passed out at the top of the stairs because yeah. they were trying to carry her well, down. Well, what kills her? No, because she's coming up the stairs and the mom fucking pushes her down the stairs. She kicks her. No, that happens. So she gets out while the dad's downstairs. She escapes, yeah. Yeah, and she's starting to come up the stairs while the family's home. Right, And right. then she does this karate kick and kicks her down, down and the she stairs. hits her head, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, I think kills her. Yeah. that. So so the so the mom of the poor family, she kicks her down down the flight of stairs right as the family's, you know, she's screaming, saying, help me. And, um, and they pull it off, man. The mom comes in. They have no idea what's going on. The husband's downstairs, and we kind of get to learn more about the family while he's down there because he's talking to the um, he's talking to the husband of the ho- old yeah, housekeeper. The husband's he's, super drunk right now. Yeah, he is. He's wasted. Yeah, and, and he's using his head to he's hit, hit the lights. And we see now that the lights have been changing. So he has there's there's lights. The lights on when you come into the house. There's switches down in the basement in the secret bunker that you can control those lights. And so we find out here, which is a great setup and payoff too. That the husband of the housekeeper has been living there forever, and he like loves he loves respect. He loves Mister Res- Park, Mister Park, <laughs> respect, like, like, respect. Like because he like he worships Mister Park basically like almost as a god because he's been down there and he has all these photos of him up against the yeah. wall, and he's been trying to talk to him in Morse code with the lights, telling him thank you. Yeah, stuff, which yeah. is just fucking crazy because he doesn't want to be found. He's like the the sun will figure it out. He's yeah. a Boy Scout. <laughs> yeah. I'm like this is so just he's too down good. there. He's down there hitting his head on these switches because his hands are up, and he's basically hitting him until his nose is like bleeding. Well, that's not yet. His nose. That's when that's when he's trying to send a signal after he's finding out that his wife's dying. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, so we kind of find out though he's been down there doing this, and the dad right now he's sees just it. drunk and he's just like respect. Yeah, and poor, the poor dad's like laughing. Well, no, the poor dad's laughing, but he's like, wow, this guy's fucking crazy. Yeah, like, this guy doesn't even want to leave. Even if he could leave, he doesn't want to. He's become so. The, the husband of the old housekeeper has become so, like, institutionalized, he doesn't know how to live outside of the basement because he's been there for, like, five years. And so it's a, and it's a great setup for later on in the story because it's setting up something else. So at this point, the dad's down there. He needs to find a way to get out of there. The mom of the poor family is kind of feeding the rich family, and they're all kind of getting settled in. The son's hiding underneath the bed. There's some great shit here where the dog is underneath, the like, barking him underneath the bed. And the daughter, the rich daughter, is, like, about to look under, but she doesn't because... She finds out that they had food without her. So she runs off. So some barely escapes that. Yeah. Next thing is they're all down there eating, and um, the son wants to go out and have his tent outside in the rain. So he runs out there with his with his little Native American tent, puts it up, and the mom and dad are like, dude, he's being crazy, but okay, we love him. We'll let... And the dad's gotten the son these walkie-talkies as well. That he's been playing with the whole movie. And so he's using that to go, Roger, over and out, like checking in with him. He's like, Roger, whatever, and they're talking yeah. over the walkie-talkies. And the mom and dad is like, hey, we're going to stay downstairs. At the same time, while this is going on, the rest of the Park family has made their way, other than the mom, to hide underneath this table in the living room. So the son, the, the daughter, daughter, and the dad, all the poor son, daughter, and dad are hiding in there. And the mo- the rich mom and rich dad are in there hanging out watching their son through that window who's out there in the um, in his teepee. And they're sitting there like going, how the fuck are we going to get out of here? And you're just thinking, how are they going to get out of here? Like it's a really suspenseful oh, thing. Yeah. And the mom, the poor mom's just kind of doing the housekeeping stuff still. So she's supposed to be there. But if they find these three hiding underneath the table, they're fucked. Um, so now basically they're waiting for a chance to escape. And this is where Austin made a good point. It takes kind of a weird turn because the mom, rich dad and rich mom, rich dad and mom, obviously they're alone. They start, start getting it on. They start getting all frisky with each other. And there's some, just some, I mean, everybody has their own weird shit. They do when they're alone, when they're getting all sexual, 
I'm sure we all have our well, weird the kids. dad's like, I want you to wear the panties. Those cheap panties that I found. Yeah. He starts like grabbing her nipples. Like, oh, your nipples hard. And the mom's like, would you buy me drugs? Would you buy, buy me, me drugs? drugs? Like, well, well, and the reason she says that, though, is because he says, you know, this lady was probably on this, like, a lot of these guys do drugs in the back of these seats when they're having sex. Yeah. So that's where that comes from. And meanwhile, the family's sitting here listening. The poor family's under the table listening to this entire thing go on, basically. And well, they have a conversation before this, too, about the dad smelling. Oh, yeah, and this is where we do a set where the dads, where rich dad and poor, rich dad and poor mom are going, rich dad's going, yeah, you know, I love our driver. He's good, and he kind of straddles that line, but he stinks. He just has a stinky smell. And before this, the son's saying that all the people that are working in the house smell the same. They smell the same, yeah. Um, and so this is where we're going to start with this idea that the rich people are like, oh, they just smell bad. And um, that's, what, that's what this whole scene, that's a big part yeah. of this scene as well. So eventually they pass out and fall asleep, and the family finally has a chance to escape. They start escaping, and right as the dad's making his escape, the radio goes off. The kid's, like, checking in with mom. The rich kid, rich son out on the TV, he's checking in with mom and dad. And the dad wakes up and goes, what are you doing? Come inside, and we can just, you know. He's shining the light right on his parents. Yeah. And the so dad's really just, like, literally laying on the, the floor. In the middle of the living room. Yeah. And, um, and they escape. Yeah. Basically. And when they escape, they go back to their house, and they're, everything's flooding. There's this huge flat, this huge flood. It's flooding their their house. They left that back window open, so it's just completely filled with sewage water as well. It's just a nasty situation you can imagine. And they're just trying to save everything at their house. And the sun grabs the rock. Like, it's literally overflowing. We have the toilet is, like, blowing up with water, and the daughter's trying to keep it down. Which That, that scene where she's sitting on the toilet and it's blowing up and she's smoking, that might be one of my favorite shot it's a great scenes. shot it this is a great really scene. good yeah. yeah and she's just like it's just like fucked we're fucked yeah life is fucked this is how shitty it is literally living as a poor family yeah they end up getting out of there the sun brings the rock and they're all they're all sitting and they're trying to figure out they're talking like what do we they're sitting at like a shelter where everyone's in the neighbors been able to go yeah, and sleep they're all sleeping in a gym and the dad the daughter and the son are all sitting there the poor one the poor family and they're basically saying like what are we going to do and the dad's like don't worry i have a plan um to solve it and the son's like, well, what's your plan? He's like, listen, there is no plan. He's like, it's best to have no plan because when you have a plan in life and it doesn't go right, then it sucks. So it's better it's not a plan for anything. And it's a really great little moment, a, a talk between the dad and the son, and kind of showing how the dad's probably lived his life, which is I just don't have any plans. And I think in a way, though, too, here with this conversation, to kind of you know get back into the philosophy of this film, what it's trying to say, that's how you end up poor, is when you don't make plans, when you don't fucking try. When you don't make plans and you don't make goals in life you end up like this family you end up yeah and that's the thing where it's like take some self-responsibility you want to sit there and go the poor and the rich it's just not fair well if you don't fucking sacrifice you don't put the time in to fucking earn what you want you're gonna be poor sorry yeah there are scenarios where you get fucked in life and you have no choice and you know what that happens to everyone but the difference is if you get up and you fucking fight back and you fix your life and you can fucking do that. And I'm so tired of these fucking films shoving down your throat. Well, when you're poor, it's just impossible. No, it's not. I've been there. Been poor. Been broke. Had a head injury, brain injury where I couldn't do dick. Physically could not watch television because I would have seizure-like symptoms. Been there. Climbed out of it. Look at where we're at now. Don't fucking tell me it can't be done. Don't tell me that you're screwed because you know what? I didn't grow up with tons of money from mommy and daddy. I'll give all my money away today, motherfuckers, and I'll still climb out. I'm so tired of hearing that. It's fucking bullshit. Sorry. I know it's not a political podcast, but that's what this movie's about. It's a political piece of film. Now, it's well made. This line here, though, I think is really meaningful and telling. The dad goes, yeah, don't make plans. If you make plans, you'll be disappointed. Better not to have any plans then nothing can go wrong. That, and I think that's a good point, which is if you do that, you're going to be screwed. But the director, was that his intentions with that line. I have no idea, but I think that's what I take from that. Sh- from that's that what line. I take from it, too. When he said that, I was just like, well, that explains why you're in the situation right. you're in. That's the way I took it. Right. And that's the way you should take it. But if the director put it in there, he's like, that's just how poor people have to... That's just, just how they, they feel. They don't have plans. It's like, yeah, I totally... Just like you, I, dis- I completely disagree. Right. So, And once again, that doesn't mean that... Poor people don't have it rough. Okay, we do. They do. Been there. It's Poor tough. people in America don't have it rough. Well, other countries everybody has different things. Right? Could be maybe different. You have, maybe yeah. you have medical things. Things happen like that put you in that situation, right? But once again, like me telling you, hey, it's okay for you just to fucking give up because there's no point isn't helping you. Better that I go, hey, what do you need? I can help you. And also, you need to make a plan and you need to take some responsibility. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, it's a great scene, though. They're all sitting there. The son's holding the rock, and the son is also saying, well, I have my own plan, basically. He says, I have a way that I'm going to solve this. And Because he's like, well, Dad has no plan, so I need to figure this out. Yeah. Um, and, he, and, the, and, this and they're point kind too, of insinuating that they're going to kill these people as well. Like they're making the decision they're going to kill. They're going to kill not the rich family, but the ex housekeeper and her husband. I'm yeah. getting the feeling here, like that the dad is also kind of saying, maybe not though, because I feel like the dad is the dad. Too no, nice. the dad had no plan. He's just like, you know what? Fuck it. What happens? He's, happens. He's rolling with the punches. Yeah. And the son's like, I need to fucking. Like, well, I'm responsible because I made all the plans yeah. for this. I need to do something. At about this, this point, you can tell that the son feels like it's his fault for the situation that they're in. And, so and, he's gonna solve it. Well, and this is plot point two, where now things are. Now we're going into the resolution of the story. How is this gonna end? How is the family downstairs going to get taken care of? How is the rich family going to deal with it when they find out what's going on? And how is the poor family going to get out of the situation? And which rolls us into the final act, which is basically their home now. And the wife decides, well, you know, our son's birthday was kind of a bust because of the rain. I'm going to have a big party today. Let's get a party going. So she's calling those guys are down. And, and he's, she's calling the family. And she's like, hey, Mr. Kim, who is the poor dad, who's the driver, I need you to come into work today. I'll pay you double um, because we're going to have a party. Can you come in? Obviously, she has no idea what's going on with them, right? And the dad's just haggard because he has yeah, many sleep. Well, all of them are, yeah. And then, of course, the daughter, the rich daughter's like, well, can we invite, you know, my my tutor? Because I want to get boned. my boyfriend. Um, and she's like, yeah, it's fine. So they call and invite her. Oh, we should also invite the tutor for the son because she... Well, she was the first one invited. She gets invited as well, yeah. right? And so they're all invited to the house, and they're all exhausted because they had this crazy <laughs> night the night before. And um, things are coming to a head here. Meanwhile, we see downstairs the the wife um, of the husband is broken free, and she or no, she's not even tied up. She's coming too because she fell down the stairs. Yeah, she's and she up. frees. Yeah, she has a concussion. Well, she frees the husband. Yeah. So now her and the husband are both free, but they can't get out because the door is locked. And the dad and the, and the hit dad the handle. Took the handle that opens it from the inside, and a uh, poor dad did. And um and she's sick. She's vomiting because she has a concussion, and she's sick. I mean, she's you know she's probably yeah. got a, she's hemorrhaging probably in the brain. And she's also sick because of the peach allergy. And the husband's like, you can just tell he's just like, fuck, dude. Like the the husband of the ho- the old housekeeper, like he's watching his wife die and he loves her. You can get the sense that these two do love each other. Yeah. So that's escalating. She's probably going to die. She does die. Meanwhile, all the other characters are showing back up at the house, all the poor characters. So, you know, the we see Mr. Kim. Well, right before that. so Going to the grocery well, store with the wife. Well, that night, that's when she comes to, gets the husband free, and he starts SOSing. And the son sees it in during the rainstorm, and he writes it down. Right, yeah, because he's nothing, a boy scout. Yeah, nothing comes from that, though. Right. So, But that's where he's hitting his head so hard that he's bleeding okay, everywhere. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Right, because he's not untied yet. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Right, okay. So now jumping back forward, so now we're sitting up all these things. You're right. I'm glad you pointed that out. That's a big point. That is a setup and a payoff. Yeah. Um. So here, they're all downstairs. They're all coming over to this house. The party's getting set up. It's big. It's nice. The wife is obviously bothered by the smell of Mr. Kim, the poor dad, while she's driving. So we see that again. That's another setup when she's yeah. driving home from the grocery store. And you can see that it's, now that he's aware of it, he's bothered by yeah. it. And he smells himself, and you can just tell he's bothered. She rolls down the window, and yeah. she's like... And um, so, once again, that's setting stuff up. They get home. Everything's getting set up. Um, the the son, who's the tutor, shows up, and he's brought the rock with him. He goes upstairs, and he's hanging out with the girl, the daughter that he's tutoring, the poor kid, poor son with rich daughter. And they're talking, and he's like, do I belong here? Like, does, do I look like I belong here? And she looks at him and like, yeah, you belong here. Like, you could be here. Like, you know, like you could fit in this society. They're looking out the window, and, like, there's and a cello the being played, a bunch of happy, rich people just and spending the, money and getting drunk. And the poor son's like, do I belong in a place like this? And the, and, the, and the rich daughter's like, yeah, yeah, you could be here. And they're kissing and making out and whatever. And so from here, he goes, well, I need to go do something. So he takes off and goes down the stairs with the rock. Obviously, he's going down there to kill those guys. And you can tell because he's nervous. As he's going down the stairs, like he gets startled and drops the rock, and it goes flying down the. Seriously, no, he's coming. Yeah. Um. And and he's like terrified. He's going down. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim's getting set up with Mr. Kim, who's poor dad, is with rich dad, and they're dressed up as Indians because the little boy loves Indians, like we said before, which is another payoff for his birthday. They're gonna surprise attack him with these fake with these tomahawks as if they're like, like a play thing when they bring yeah. out this cake, and the cake's being brought out by the poor daughter and the, and the and the son, rich son, who's a little little boy. He's gonna save her. From the dad, from poor the dad Indians. and rich dad who were, gonna, who were Indians, right? And so there's a part where they're talking to each other, and they're behind getting ready, and he's kind of, like, thanking him, I think, for coming and telling him, you know, he's paying him extra and everything. And, um... Well, at the same time... Well, and right here, he kind of shuts him down because there's something going on here. Well, it, 
Actually, he asks again, do you love your he's like, wife? He's like, no, and, you do love your wife. He goes, I can see that you do love your wife, basically. Yeah. He, says. he goes, because he asked him that earlier, you're right, there's a payoff in where he, he's, the setup was in the car earlier in the movie. He goes, do you love your wife? And the rich dad's like, yeah, I guess I do, I guess. And then, like, they're there behind the bush now at the party, and he goes, I can see now. Mr. Kim Poor Dad goes, he says it. He goes, I can see that you really love your wife. Yeah. Because of all the things you do for her. And, um, and he goes, yeah, I do. And But he also kind of looks at him and goes, Mr. Kim, you're my driver. Like, don't cross the line. Like, he finally kind of puts that, because that's also a setup and payoff in dialogue, too, where he finally yeah. goes, hey, you know, like, you're, you're here to do a job. And there's that separation now, and this is kind of the setup, too, because, like, he's telling Poor Dad, know your place. I'm your boss. Yeah. Um, and from there, we cut to the sun's going downstairs, and fucking crazy, crazy, uh, de- crazy husband of the housekeeper who's dead now. She's died in the basement. She died from her injuries. Um, he attacks the son. And well, the son's him. like checking on her. He's like, "Are you okay?" Yeah, yeah. And then from this is a really good shot from behind. You see this little like wire, like almost yeah, something he you grabs use, him right. Almost something you'd use to catch a dog or something. But and he, he grabs him by the neck. Yeah, grabs him and then just. Dude, like when this scene happened, I was not expecting. Yeah, this. Like, I was not. Yeah, and he goes running and sticks it and gets him stuck on the wall. And he goes running upstairs. Oh, he breaks free. Yeah, he's able to get out because he's coming over to smash his head with the rock right. and he rolls and gets out. Right, and he starts running upstairs. And you're like, all right, he's gonna make it. Yeah, and he gets up there, and up as soon as he gets out of the secret bunker, pulls him back down and comes up and just annihilates the sun. Yeah, well, so just brutal. The housekeeper's husband, yeah, ends up pulling him back down by that same. Like, wire, right? Yeah. It's a great, it's great, dude. It's just escalating, escalating. Then you're like, he did. And then he fuck, yeah, he grabs a rock and smashes his head. Basically does what he was going to do to them. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck. Dude, I remember that part. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I'm like, this shit's not good, it's dude. the whole last half this of that movie. This is fucking well, bad. Well, that whole part, like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to go down this way. Where no. he breaks free, and then he's just on a killing spree. Yeah, he's so just he looking kills, crazy. Because well, his wife is dead. Yeah. So he's like, fuck you guys. You murdered my wife. Yeah, well, so and this his, is just revenge. And his wife was telling him the name of oh, poor yeah. mom. Oh, yeah. She's like, like don't forget. Like, yeah. avenge me. Like, avenge the... Kill the housekeeper who took over for me. So the old housekeeper's, yeah. like, telling her husband, this is the name of the woman that you need to kill. She killed me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so he runs up the... So he's basically killed the son. The son's in there, pulled of blood. With the rock that was given his good luck in the very beginning, he runs. So, um, ex housekeeper's husband runs up the stairs, and first thing he does, he grabs a knife out of the kitchen, and he's going to the backyard of the party because he's going out to just find, looking like a psycho yeah, man to find the wife. And it's like so against the grain. He's like, "Oh, everyone's having a good time, and everyone's hanging out." Meanwhile, here's a psychopath with a kitchen knife with blood all over his face. So he comes out and he's screaming the name. He starts screaming the name of the wife, poor wife, of poor wife, the one, the the one that killed now. his wife. Yeah, killed his wife, and he goes charging. And stabs the daughter of poor family. So poor daughter gets stabbed. Yep. She's just bleeding. His next thing is, so no, from here, poor dad and, and rich dad rush out to try to control everything that's going on. Is it the daughter or the or is it who gets stabbed? It's the poor it's daughter. It's the son. Does the son get stabbed too? The young son? No, he does. Well, no, someone gets stabbed because he's like looking because it becomes a choice between saving poor dad's daughter and there's someone else who's having. Oh, the son has a seizure. Oh, yeah. It's a setup and payoff. It's the same thing. Because, right. yeah, so the mom we, talks. She earlier finally, in the movie, go ahead, yeah. The mom finally talks about why, earlier on. Yeah, why the son is messed up. He had um, he saw a ghost on one of his birthdays, and his cake was sitting out of the fridge, and he was downstairs eating it. And he looked over to where the staircase is, where they come up from the secret bunker, and there's this pair of big old eyes of the dude that's been living in the basement because he's right. up there creeping. So he, which is awesome. It was, it was freaking it's kind of a funny, funny shot. Dude. I was, I thought um, it was hilarious. Which is another great setup. And they set that up way early in the story. Yeah. Because the whole reason she and hires the off. art therapy is like, yeah, because the, because the daughter, the poor daughter, when she gets hired, she's like, well, he might have some trauma that needs to be resolved. And the mom's like, oh my God, yes, he does. He has trauma from when he was young. And she won't tell, goes. She's like, but I don't want to talk about it. And then later yeah. she reveals that. Right. So you're right. That's a perfect step. So the son goes into a fucking epileptic seizure. Yeah. So he's on the ground, thro- like. Just foam from the mouth, and the, and the and rich dad's like, my son is having a freaking epileptic seizure. We have 15 minutes, and they talk about how you have to have 15 minutes to get them to the hospital, or, yeah. or serious shit could happen. The kid could die, or some serious things. So this is like, so this is what happens. So now you have we're back to the party. Everyone's around crazy. Ex house house um, keepers husband's kill was on a deadly rampage. Stabs the poor daughter. She's bleeding. Poor and then dad's the mom like, shows up, and they start fighting. Right. So the mom the the mom is fighting, and then some random who gets. Oh yeah, no, that's right. So they're fighting. 
they take a shish kebab and stab it through crazy psycho guy. Yeah. Crazy psycho housekeeper's husband, ex-housekeeper's husband. He gets taken out. He's like looking, and I think he looks at Mr. Mr. Park. Park he's like, goes, Mr. Park, he respect. Goes, respect. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but he's dying. And so poor dad's like trying to, and here's the thing, that's, this is where it gets really intense because poor dad's trying to save his daughter who's going to die. She's bleeding, got stabbed right in the chest. Yeah. And he's like, and rich dad's trying to save his son. He's like, I need you to drive me to the hospital, Mr. Kim, poor dad. Now, like it's more important to take care of my son than your daughter, but he doesn't know that it's his, that it's Mr. Kim's daughter. Yeah. And so Mr. Kim now is like, fuck you. Like this is where Mr. Kim is like, goes off the rails. He's like, my daughter's dying here. This is more important. Like he has to choose. And Rich has like, it doesn't matter. I'm paying you. You can take care of my son first. It's kind of yeah. the sense that we're getting here. Nothing said. It's all done in visuals, which is really well done, and um, expressions. And it's a really great scene. And this is where poor dad just goes off the rails. He's like, like you, you can see that he's finally had enough. He's had enough of being poor. He's had enough of being a nice guy. He's had enough of doing all the things that he said that he knows he's supposed to do. And he gets up, takes the knife, and he stabs Mr. Mr. Park. Park and kills Rich Dad. Mom freaks out, grabs her son, runs down the stairs. To, I think, right? Yeah, they take off. Um, and and then things just take I take off. You see, Rich Dad like gets up and he's like he like or poor dad gets up and is like, oh fuck, what have I done? He takes off because he has no plan. Because he has no plan. And um, it, from here we kind of transition. Everything kind of it kind of just ends there. You see the girl um, that was getting tutored pick up boyfriend and is carrying him. Yeah, that's right. So so. Rich daughter takes the tutor, poor son, and is running him out to get him bigger. Yeah. She finds him in the basement bleeding, and then mom, mom is just holding poor or rich or poor mom's holding poor daughter, just dying. Yeah, and then we kind of have some transitions where we kind of see poor son's coming too. There's some more narration. He's in the hospital. His head's been wrapped up. He obviously had a serious brain injury, and he's talking about how he's laughing all the time, which co- yeah. comes with having a brain injury. Basically, wrapping up this story and saying, "Yeah, you know my my uh, my sister died," and, I, and he's like laughing about it because he has a brain injury. Um, which can come along with that. And his mom's still alive, and she's taking care of him. They get found guilty of all these things, but they're released back into society. They're living together in the same old house. Once again, his sister ended up dying. Mr. Park died as well. And we don't see any more of the Rich family. Here. No, Rich it's family's all, gone. Rich family's gone. Obviously, they sold the house of the traumatic event that happened there. We don't know where, where Rich Dad is, or Poor Dad is. He's No one knows where he is. There's a news thing going on about where he's at. And we see Poor Son kind of rehabilitating himself, and he goes on a hike one day. Up by that house, he wants to see the house now. And um, while he's up there, this is where the payoff comes in. He sees um, he's up there one night, and he stayed later than usual for some reason. And he sees the light doing Morse code, right? Just so like starts, it was doing before. Yeah. So he writes it all down, and it's just one big letter from his dad. And then it cuts to his dad in the basement kind writing of his letter. What's, what he's, yeah. what's happened? Like how he got down there. So basically, he circled back when everything, all the crazy stuff happened, and he hid back in the basement. Yeah, and like there's before this, the son's like watching all the news reports on it, and they're talking about how they can't find the dad and like how he just disappeared out of nowhere. And, and they're kind of like following him to yeah. see he'll lead them to him. And then it kind of like shows you like why he was able to get away because what happened after the party, he went straight into the garage and he knew that he needed to just go hide straight in the basement. Right. And that's what he did. So basically, where it ends is. So the dad's down there. We can see he's down there, and he's like, and he's also remorseful that he killed the rich dad. Yeah, like he's like saying, "I'm sorry." Well, even, he's looking at a picture and saying, "I'm really sorry for what he, I did." And he even buries the old housekeeper too. Yeah, after they sell the house, and he's there alone. So I mean, it's well, he has to. That's not really. I mean, I don't know if that's so much like him doing a good thing. Like, he, like he's well, not he, gonna live down he, there with dead bodies. He gave her a proper burial. <laughs> that's though. what he says, right? Yeah. It's a crazy movie. What does he do? Oh, uh, they probably took the body of the crazy housekeeper's crazy husband, huh? Ex housekeeper. Yeah, the, they he got that up. So anyway, so he's down there, and so next is then the son's replying to his dad, writing a letter, which is I don't know how he's going to get it to him. Maybe he's just writing the journal for himself. But he's basically saying, "Hey, dad, I'm going to get you. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go and be successful, and I'm going to buy that house." Him one day. making a plan. Yeah, finally making a plan of how he's going to solve. He's like, "And one day I will make it back to you, and you, and we will all live in that house together." And you kind of see it, but then it flashes back, and the last shot is the same shot we saw in the beginning of the back window of the poor family's place where they live, and um, it's snowing, and it's showing him kind of finishing his plan, and then it ends. Yeah. And, I mean, story-wise, dude, it follows all the principles of a good screenplay. I mean, it's a great story, right? I mean, it does a great job getting across things. Everything's in there for a reason. Like, this guy, I got to give it to this director. He's talented. He's a talented storyteller. 
You know what I mean? No, he's really good. And the characters are great. It's just his his deeper meaning and message behind this film I don't agree with. No, I think it's fucking bullshit. But other than that, like as a full-on story, the only as thing... As a piece of entertainment, it's great. It's really well done. The only thing I don't like is like um, Kim's... Motivations maybe to not, kill though. Mr. Park. Maybe not man. though. Maybe it may I mean think it about doesn't it. You're work just for me, shit. Man. You're just taking shit and you're taking shit and you're He's, taking shit. You're I know, but Mr. Mr. Park isn't doing that to him. He's not being it. like the only thing he ever said is he's kind of stinky. Yeah, I agree. And like even the wife, she never like ever was rude about it. They under, were never rude to under him. Under extreme stress though, like you may have a freak out like that. To where you're just like in the middle of like, oh my daughter yeah. my daughter's dying. Yeah. I'm gonna come and stab you instead of like trying to help my daughter. Like, if I was a dad and that was my daughter, I would have been picking her up and just, like, peacing out. Yeah, I don't know. And just roll with I mean, I kind of Mr. agree Park. with you. I do. Like, I just can't see him running over there like, oh, I'm going to stab you, Mr. Park, and then then I'm going to run off. Well, I mean... Because, like, it's not Mr. Park's fault. Like, I could have seen not. him, seen the dad maybe trying to fight the crazy dude that came from the basement. Now, Well, now, maybe if Mr. Park had been more of an asshole, but, like, leave her! We have to do it. Like, he doesn't yeah, even yeah. do that. He doesn't even do that. Like, it's just that sense. He's like, you need to come help me. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I agree. Um, I think, story-wise, though, is a screenplay. It's well-written. It's a very... It's a well... It's well... It's... Super tight. It is. There's some shit that I think they linger on too much in the beginning when he's first going into the house. When when the son first gets there, like, I feel like they take a really long... But then again, I... Uh, it's all... It all pays is off. pretty good, yeah. Yeah, so... Overall, for story, I think it's a... Uh, I, I, but I think it's a solid movie. I, I mean, I think it's a great movie. I really do. Yeah, I'd watch this over Joker any day. Yeah, well, I think because the characters are more multidimensional. Yeah, they're they're not as, they're not so much straw man. Like this is the worst case scenario. You can never get out of this. Like they have more depth in them. Yeah. Um. But let's so let's so let's talk about that. Though. Let's talk about before we give us a rating on story. Let's talk about the philosophy behind this movie. So, I afterwards I'm like, okay, there's a reason why this movie got picked for the Academy Awards. It wasn't just because it's a good film because it is a good film. Visually, storytelling wise, it's a good movie. But the cat, there's there are movies made all over the world in foreign languages every single year. There's a reason why this film was picked, you guys. It was picked because it was pushing a political message that they like, and that's not conspiracy. Look up what the director said about when he made this movie and what he was trying to do. I read about it afterwards. I'm like, I know there's more to this, and I could kind of sense it, but it wasn't as heavy handed as Joker, where he was. His whole thing with this movie is trying to show you the disparity between the rich and the poor in society. Now, that's totally fine, like we talked about before. That exists. There are people who suffer, and there are people who are poor. There are people who have hard lives. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. What I find really funny about this, though, is we have this director who's making this in South Korea. Now, South Korea is much better off than North Korea. In North Korea, I want you guys to look this up. Look into it, okay? They're literally eating their fucking kids because they have no food. Now, if South Korea didn't exist and... Okay, the United States wasn't over there back in the 60s fighting the Korean War with the South Koreans by their sides. South Korea would be be under Kim Jong-il and Un. They'd be doing the same shit. This, this guy couldn't make this movie in North Korea. He'd be executed. So what I find, and also, did you know that this director who made this is worth $30 million? Hmm, funny. You're going to give all that $30 million up to all the other poor people in South Korea, motherfucker? How about you do that? When you go out and you give all your money away to all the poor people in South Korea, then you can preach to me about fucking wealth inequality. Then you can talk to me. If you, in the system, if you can make $30 million in South Korea making a film like this and not get thrown in prison, and I'm not saying you should be thrown in prison, and I'm not saying that you can't make a movie like this. I am not against people saying what they want to say in film. Film is for that. We are allowed to do whatever we want, and I'm not against that. And you know what? I'm not against this guy making tons of money. I'm happy for him. I'm happy that, he, that he's been successful and that he's made all of his money doing what he does. I bet he's worked his ass off for that. I think he deserves the money that he's earned. I just find it really funny when that guy who uses that system and becomes successful comes and makes a movie and then goes, hey, guys, you should be upset because this system is really rigged and wrong and it's against you. And there's no way you can make it unless, you know, you literally are scumbags. Oh, he made Snowpiercer, too. Yeah, which is a great movie, too. Snowpiercer is a good film. I didn't know that. I didn't know he made that. That's great. He was the writer on it. That's a good movie. That movie also has a lot of political stuff. But anyway, my point is with that is that the philosophy behind this movie I disagree with. I don't think there's anything wrong with making a movie like this. I'm not saying that he shouldn't be allowed to make a movie like this. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that be careful of what you watch. And when you watch these things, ask yourself the honest question. And I think it's fine to watch a movie that's going to ask us these questions because that's what film, film is here to do. It's to go, hey, what do you think about this? But I'm just saying be careful of what you digest because here's the thing. 
and I don't mean careful in the sense of don't watch this movie, but watch it and then go do some research. Do some research about the guy who made it. Do some research about the real circumstances of poverty in South Korea and in America. Look into these things because the person who's doing this, who's making this movie to not just entertain you, but to persuade you, he wants you to think certain things. It's not a conspiracy. Go read his own stuff. He quotes, he quotes, he quotes Karl Marx, who is a, I'm sorry, dude, Karl Marx, Marx was not a good guy. Like I've said before in this podcast, come at me, dude. Comment on it. I've read the Communist Manifesto. I've read about the fucking atrocities of Soviet Russia, of Cambodia, of the North Vietnamese, of, oh, North Korea, Kim Jong-il up in North Korea, bro, or Kim Jong-un, okay? The motherfucker, it's not a better system. And my question to this director is, tell me what the alternative is. Tell me what the alternative is. Tell me what the alternative is to a capitalist free market society. I'm not saying it's perfect. There is a lot of, there is an equality, but that is life. Things are not fair all the time. In the animal kingdom, other animals get eaten. Nobody's like, hey man, and I'm not saying that means we can't be hospitable. I'm all about helping people out. I'm all about that. I would, I would not turn someone away if they wanted my help. Unless I, unless they were taking advantage of me and I, and I thought that. Unless they're being a parasite. Well, and sometimes when we help people, we hurt them. That's the thing, too, is like sometimes when we enable people, we're hurting them. And I think that's a question we should ask ourselves. In this movie, I don't think I, – I think it has a real sharp bend, and it's trying to push one thing, and I disagree with what it's trying to push. However, it's a great film. It's well made. Do I think it deserved an Academy Award? Like were there other movies that came out last year that, could, that should have won it? Is it funny the last two – the last couple – the last couple of movies we've reviewed that have been Academy Award winners have all had this same message? Joker? This? Is that a coincidence? No, it's not. I think not. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, so I think on story, I think I give it a 10. I give it a 10 on story, though. Even though I don't agree with the message that it's trying to push, I would give it a 10. It's a, it's a well made. It's well made, man. It is really well done. I, I, I liked it. I enjoyed watching this more than Joker. Yeah, I did too. Well, and I think, once again, what are movies here to do? Movies are here to make us ask questions. Movies are also here to show us ways to behave in the world that we can emulate. And I think what's really sad about this movie is what do I take away from this movie? What I take away from this movie is not so much, Oh wow. Society kind of forced these people into what happened, but man, why didn't the poor family find a better way with how smart they were and how many resources they had? And, and, and why didn't the father step in and correct his kids before they went off and started doing this? Cause he didn't have a plan. And maybe we should all have a plan. Maybe that's, maybe that's the thing to take away is make a plan the nice thing and with make your life with what he did in this one is that in Joker it was all just one sided. In this film, you can find pieces. Maybe he wasn't intending to do it that way, but in this one, it's pretty good. It's pretty well balanced, even though it is pretty political. I'd say he did a better job than the Joker did. Oh, for sure, for sure. Because it's not as heavy-handed as it is. Like, in the Joker, there's straight-up lines just yeah. ramming it down your throat. Right. Where in this, it's not... It's much more subtle. Yeah. No, which, he, he does a better job. Which I like that more. Well, and it's like I said, dude, what I don't like... Like, once you start to read into what he was... Like, a lot of the shit that I'm telling you guys is stuff that he said in interviews. Yeah. Right? Like, where he's like, yeah, the Native American stuff's also kind of like to show the imperialism of America. And that really pisses me off because it's like, motherfucker, you wouldn't exist. You wouldn't exist if America wasn't there fighting the Korean War. We have, I don't know how many thousands of soldiers in South Korea right now keeping you in a place, buddy, where you can make that movie. True. Like, and, but you want to sit there and go, I really wanted to talk about how America's, shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up. Sit the fuck down and shut up. You can say whatever you want, okay? I'm not saying you can't say it, but you're wrong. You're wrong, bro. Yeah. You're wrong. These people are the reason why you can make this film and become well, a millionaire. You well, have millions of dollars. You want to know why he's so happy, though? It's because he's rich. Oh, that's right. <laughs> huh? That's why he's a good person. He can tell all of us why we're shitty if we want. Yeah. And that's the thing, dude. It's like this wealth inequality thing. You really ask yourself, what do you go without? What do you go without in America or even South Korea? What do you go without? Okay, I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying things don't get tough. I'm not saying bad things don't happen to good people. They do. Um. But once again, you know what? You want to go read something? Go read Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. It's about a guy who was in the was in the Holocaust. He was in a concentration camp, and he makes the statement: "I saw people who had no reason to be kind choose to be kind, choose to do the right thing, even though everyone else around them was fucking wolves 
and we're betraying them and literally burning them alive. I chose to do the right thing, and I saw people choose the right thing. And that's the thing. is It comes out of that thing. Are we a product of our societies, of the things around us, or are we able with free will to choose the right thing to do? And that's why those stories where you have a character who chooses to do the right thing are so much more powerful than the stories where they choose to do the wrong thing, right? Yeah. That's why that's that's why we love superhero movies. That's why we love – it's not just because, oh, it's just mainstream bullshit, blah, blah. No, it's because that's what we're looking for. What do we give it on music, though? We give it a two. Um, so, once again, it's a great movie. I would tell you to go watch it. I think it's worth watching. All I would say is go watch it and then do some further reading. Go watch this movie, okay, and then go read The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx. Also, go read Das Capital by Karl Marx. So many, okay? so many homework assignments. Also, then go and watch the podcast, either with Joe Rogan or Jordan Peterson, where they interview a woman who escaped from North Korea and talks about how she was sold into slavery to the Chinese when she was a kid as a sex slave and how her mother and her father were tortured and people were murdered and how, they, and how people were eating each other in North Korea. Okay, go, go listen. Wait, is that? And she's crying. Did you say She's jo- crying. That was on Jocko, I thought. It's on. It's on. No, no, no. Th- like this is a woman who escaped. Oh, she's been making the rounds. She escaped North Korea, and now she's been doing interviews. She wrote a book, and she talks about how ter- her- how terrifying it is there. So I would, li- I would, like I said, watch this movie. Go read Karl Marx's The Communist Manifesto. Is pretty easy to read. Just be some things you have to look up that are in there, and then go watch um, the podcast with. Let me go look her up real quick. And once again, that doesn't mean that we can't criticize our systems. Yeah, are our systems flawed? Yes. Is there crony capitalism in America? Absolutely. Um, are these big corporations taking advantage of us? Absolutely. That's not true free market capitalism, though. It's not. Not when the government comes in and is picking winners and losers. That's a whole different thing. And we can talk about that as well. But my, my point is you have more control of your destiny than, um, than some of these guys who are making these movies want you to think. They literally have become millionaires. Doing what they love to do. Is that just because they were rich and they, they were lucky? No, it's because they worked hard. Okay? A lot of them worked their asses off. Um, sorry, guys, one sec. I'll look up the Joe Rogan episode because you guys, for those of you who don't like Jordan Peterson, that's fine. I get it. Um, her name's y- Yanomi Park. And she talks about escaping North Korea. Go watch her on the go watch her on the, the episode with uh, Joe Rogan. Go watch it, and tell me that South Korea that this family in this movie has it worse than her. Go hear her story, and then think about think about it a little bit because that's the alternative to the systems that we're in, and that's the thing that I think really is drives me nuts about these filmmakers who go and make these movies. And once again, I'm not saying they can't make them. I think they should be able to make them. I just think that they're misguided, and I think they're wrong. I think that, and I think there's nothing wrong with making a movie like this. But go look, do the research. Go look at the other side of the argument. Go look and see what it's like. Go listen to what it's like to grow up in North Korea. Because if it wasn't for American soldiers in South Korea fighting the Korean War and okay. being there still, he would not be able to make this movie. That's the only point I'm saying. Sorry. Okay. So we turn this into refiner polit- politics. I know. I didn't. I didn't want it, but it's important. It's an important part of, the, of watching these movies. So no, anyway. I agree. So go check that out. There's some homework for you if, um, if, if you want to. If you don't, that's okay, too. But uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in. This was a great – I think it's a good movie. Go watch it. It's worth watching. I liked it. So what's the final score on that? It's an 8. An 8 out of 10? Yeah. Boom. That's a good score. I know, but I think Joker got a better one, which pisses me off. Joker had good music, dude. It did. But this got the same score on – what this really got hurt on was music. Music killed it. Everything yeah. else did really well. If they had only had a better score, like music score – um, it would have been Joker not, out. It's just not memorable. That's the only thing that sucks. But other than that, I mean, the story, the way he pieced that together, even though there's like a little, some small things, I still... It's well done, dude. Yeah, I didn't see it coming, man. No, and I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I was like waiting to see what was going to happen. No, it's really well done. So hats off to the director for uh, for the story and for the execution. It's, it's great. It's it's great. It's great. So, um, yeah, man, that's wrapping. Not expecting that. That's wrapping up this episode of Refiner Productions. Once again, you guys, um, I said Refiner Productions, Refiner Reviews. Wrapping this episode of Refiner Reviews, um, brought to you by Refiner Productions. We are a video and photo production company, and we do everything from video, from commercials, weddings, photo shoots, 
podcast. Um, reach out to us. You can find us on refinerproductions.com. We also have a YouTube page called Refiner Productions. And uh, let us know what you guys think about this movie. Did you like Parasite? Do you think that we're wrong? Do you maybe think that, you know, that this whole thing is a fair point and, you know, we just need to restructure our societies where everything's more fair and if, you know, and that the poor family, they had no choice. I mean, let us know. I mean, I'm not, I make, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not right about everything. And we want to hear from you guys. So give us a review. Tell us how you, how you feel about the podcast. Please like and share um, and subscribe. And uh, that's uh, it's probably, let's probably let's wrap this up. Wrapping, wrapping it uh, up, beep. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Once again, I am Cameron Smith. I'm Austin Smith, baby. And um, we'll see you guys next time on Refiner Reviews. Peace. We love you. Leave us a review. Goodbye.